Oh, right, recording. So, hi, you guys, and welcome to my channel. I'm back with a new video, and you guys were quick with this one. And uh, Vincent have just dropped a new documentary, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. And if you guys wanted me to check it out, so I will gladly do that right now. So, I'm not gonna ramble. Oh, let's get straight into the documentary. Let's go, you guys. He won 126 fights. While losing only once. Acknowledged by most experts as pound for pound, the greatest who what? ever lived. I didn't repeat the title. It says 120 to 1. I say I'm the greatest heavyweight of all time. But pound for pound, I still say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest of all time. There That's was once a boxer Ali. who danced in the ring. A boxer called Sugar Ray Robinson. Robinson was as close to perfect as any boxer in history. When he won the world middleweight title five times. Greatest fighter, pound for pound, who ever lived. That man was beautiful, timing, speed, reflexes, rhythm, body, everything was beautiful. The guy had over 200 fights. Blazing speed. He fought for 25 years. Uncanny timing and ferocious punching power. 109 of these by knockout. Fish! Oh my god! Sugar Ray Robinson. Oh my god. Born in 1921 and raised in New York, Sugar Whole other world back then. Ray was originally named Walker Smith Jr. My name is Sugar Ray Robinson. It wasn't always Sugar Ray Robinson. I was born Walker Smith. A fighter named Ray Robinson didn't show up for a fight. His manager gave his AAU card to my father, and my father became Ray Robinson. Whose name was Ray Robinson. I borrowed his birth certificate, and I meant to give him back his name, but <laughs> Wait, he said what? I had to steal it. From there, he was stuck with that name for the remainder of his life. Robinson goes 89-0 and 0 as an amateur. Let's take a look at a teenage Ray Robinson as a Golden Gloves featherweight in 1939. Who would believe that the string bean looking boy in white trunks will go on to become the greatest fighter pound for pound of all time? Robinson appears to have a boxing finesse far beyond his years. A pulverizing right crashes off Valentine's jaw. Ray wins the featherweight championship in 1939 as an amateur. The following year, he repeated winning a gloves title, but in the lightweight division, 135 pounds. Shit! And shortly thereafter, turned pro. After winning back-to-back -back Golden Glove titles, mm. Sugar Ray turned pro at age 19. Ray Robinson comes out from the left. Robinson began his ring career professionally in 1940. Most of his career was not recorded. The great tragedy is that none of his great fights in his once. prime were ever filmed. We will never see this guy at his absolute peak where he can knock you out with one punch with either hand. And lots of the stuff that was recorded just caught the tail end of the best exchanges. It's a glimpse. One of the newspaper men remarked to George Gainford, my manager, that he, I was a sweet fighter. And George replied, sweet as sugar. And since that time, Sugar Ray Robinson has been added. In his first year, he defeated three former world champions. Ray Robinson, he breaks you down and then he knock you out. Here in round five, Ray will be looking for that one big knockout punch. No, but, but he threw oh, six punches at a time. Bing, 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 and when Robinson throws his punches, they come in bunches. Boxing man. Ray scores a turret left hook. This is the film of Ray versus reigning lightweight champion Sammy Angus. Sugar Ray destroyed the lightweight champion. Ray pouring it on. But Angit made sure the fight was held the beyond the lightweight limit, so he didn't have to risk his title. During World War II, Sugar Ray joined heavyweight champion Joe Lewis in the Army Special Services Division, putting on exhibition fights for the troops. 
Robinson served for 15 months. He was assigned to the Joe Lewis troop, which was a group of boxers headed, of course, by the heavyweight champion. His rising dominance never slowed during his service. When Ray was discharged from the army... He looked a little bit like Asa Rocky there. Just a little bit. Come on, you guys. Army, he had been widely recognized as the best welterweight in the world uh, for a long time, but he couldn't get a title shot. Finally, the Same boxing look, commission was forced to give Robinson a title shot against Tommy Bell. Six years after turning pro, Ray is finally the world champion in 1946. But at last, five days before Christmas 1946, Sugar Ray Robinson was welterweight champion of the world. His first title defense led to heartbreak. June 1947, Robinson signs to fight California's Jimmy Doyle in the first defense of his welterweight crown. Jimmy Doyle died in the ring, a boxing tragedy. I hit him a left hook. And he died right there in the ring. But when asked by journalists whether he had intended to hurt him, Robinson said, it's my job to hurt him. He just did it for the money. That's what it get you out of the situation that you're in. Stop your mother from working. And I've never enjoyed boxing. I, uh, I just, it's just a business with me. It's and I guess I just, I know I've never enjoyed it. Robinson moved on building his remarkable record, one knockout at a time. Robinson took round one with hard punches to the body and head. Ray held the welterweight title from 46 to 51. walking like, uh, like he's going to his nine to five uh, traveling the world living. defeating foreign champions in their own country it's november 27th 1950 sugar ray robinson takes on gene stock in paris france dynamite punches by sugar ray robinson <laughs> and just look at the speed of those blows are you fighting top one stock in desperate trouble here in round two <laughs> A crushing left hook by Ray Robinson and Scott goes left. down. Shout out to the lefties. Five, six, seven, eight. Scott is on his feet once again as Ray moves in. Barely, barely. A sensational combination of Come punches. on now, come on. Scott goes down for the third time. Told you. Should I get up? Told you. Count, but the Just stay down. Thrown in. in the ring, he had Towel. speed, goodness. One punch knockout power and a ring IQ that was off the charts. Luke Van Dam was the champion of oh, Brussels. It's December 9th, 1950. Ray Robinson takes on top Luke Van Dam in Brussels. Ray battered him in front of his hometown crowd. Mm. Ray Robinson all over Luke Van Dam, and Van Dam goes down from a beautiful combination. Is that Van the Stomach. Like he to the corner as the bell signals the end of the round. Luke Van Dam had to be carried to his corner between rounds. Ray with three lightning left hooks. Ray finished the job in the next round. And Van Dam goes down again. The referee counting over Luke Van Dam. It's all over. Sugar Finito. Ray Robinson, the original. He got class, class ass. Next, it was the German champ. It's December 25th, it's next to each other. It's not like that. champion Ray Robinson takes on German middleweight Hans Stress in Frankfurt. Another sharp left by Ray Robinson. A right hand bomb oh. and Stress goes down. Come on! That's the Hans German Stress champ? Trying to get to his feet. That's the German champ. Sugar Ray Robinson might be the greatest fighter of all time. A lot of people feel he is. I get it. The referee screaming out the count. That's it. It's all over. Peter Ray Robinson scores a fifth round knockout victory over German middleweight Hans Stretch in Frankfurt. Sugar Ray won the first 39 fights of his career before he moved up to middleweight to take on his most famous rival, the Bronx Bull, Jake LaMotta. Sugar Ray held the world championship well since 1946, and he ran out of challengers. He just returned from a triumphant European tour, putting his title on the line six times in less than two months. Robinson, early in his career, was so good that he was running out of welterweight challengers. And uh, in order to get opponents, 
he would go into the next division. The middleweight champ of the world. Wow. One of the ring's toughest competitors. Imagine the that today. Bull, Jake LaMotta. Because only one LaMotta Robinson fight was recorded, I decided to cover the entire rivalry all at once in this section. Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake LaMotta fought six times. LaMotta handed Robinson his first career loss in 1943. So let's drop in to Bobby Gleason's gym in the Bronx, where LaMotta usually trains whenever a tough assignment awaits him. Much of what is known now about uh, Jake LaMotta, I think, is uh, rests on Raging Bull <laughs> and what was in this generation, what they've seen. LaMotta is most associated with the Scorsese biopic, Raging Bull where a young Robert De Niro portrayed LaMotta. LaMotta upset Robinson. Now keep in mind, LaMotta might have had 19 pounds on him. Sadly, only their final fight was filmed, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The best remembered fight from their series of legendary slugfests is the last one, the St. Oh. Valentine's Day Massacre. And a fight that Ring Magazine places in the top five classics in boxing history. Boxing Club probably presents 15 rounds of boxing wow. for the World Middleweight Boxing Championship. Sugar Ray Robinson. Love their jackets. Oh, the World nice. Middleweight Boxing Champion, Jake LaMotta. Well, here it is. About the whole world's been waiting for. Broken tonight by Pat's Blue Ribbon Beer from the Chicago Stadium. The present Sugar middleweight Ray champion Jackson of the world, Jake LaMotta. The present welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Robinson. The challenge of We called the St. Valentine's, Valentine's Day Massacre. LaMotta's nose and right eye shows red around the skin from punching. It was a brutal assault. Robinson set him up with those body blows. Damaged his nose. We have LaMotta on Clear Street holding on. Row after row after row from the ring, the crowd is standing and cheering. Ray pounded on LaMotta. The fight was stopped, and Robinson had closed the book on their rivalry. LaMotta's left eye is closing gradually. Last one. LaMotta doesn't look so well. LaMotta at this moment, a tired battler, a chopping tired. block. Robinson trying to KO him. Oh my God! The fight is going to be stopped on the signal from the chairman of the Illinois Athletic Commission, Joe Trina, to thank you, Sikora. The fight was stopped in the 13th round with our scorecard. And the new world middleweight Nina. boxing champion, Sugar Ray Robinson. Oh, excuse me while I get in the ring. This fight, because it was seen by a lot of people, um, showed that boxing could have beauty to it. Funny side note, despite the punishment he routinely took in the ring, the LaMotta would live to be 95 years old. I, I just, I guess God gifted me with a hard head because I really, I really couldn't feel punching. Ray won the middleweight championship of the world in February 1951. 14 years ago, when he KO'd the tough Jake LaMotta in the 13th He's round. The Sugar, Sugar Ray Robinson had 40 fights, right? 40 and 0. And then he lost one fight, right? And after he lost that one fight, he went 80 fights undefeated. So the record was like 174 and 1. Right. It's a mon he's a monster. There's, a, there's some monsters in the past. You know, they put people like me in check. They put our egos in check. It's June 16, 1951. Newly crowned middleweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Robinson, takes on Gene Walzak in Liege. Ray gets in with a lightning left hook, and Walzak goes down. Walzak listening to the kill. Walzak is a demon for punishment. Now Robinson is fairly going all out. Boom, perfect timing. And Walzak goes down for the second time. It's all over. Sugar Ray Robinson scores a convincing six-round knockout over French middleweight Robinson had become an icon. It, it was a wonderful time of life for all of us. Dad had all his businesses here. He had a real estate business, a barber shop. He started multiple businesses in Harlem. He married and began a family. 
championship bout for the middleweight title. Ray Robinson against Randy Turbin. Here's Robinson getting into the ring. The polo grounds is packed. 61,000 people. His celebrity status had turned his fights oh, into chills. events, bringing out the biggest stars. Joe DiMaggio and Marlena Dietrich. Joe Lewis, Eddie Cantor, Eddie Egan, General MacArthur, Lowell Thomas. Every newspaper in the country is here. Robinson's best bet is to box no, this guy and look for spots. In a huddle, his head collided with Robinson's and the champion started to bleed. The referee walked over to Ray's corner at oh the end God. of the ninth round and said to Ray, Ray, your cut is very bad, I'm gonna stop the fight. Ray said, give me another round. He said, I'll give you one more round. A bad cut nearly forced a stoppage, but Ray was given one more round to knock out Turpin. started to throw punches from all angles and caught up the turf and knocked him out in the 10th round. Oh, wow. This is murder. What's keeping Turpin up? He's getting hit more than he has in his whole career. Wow! Yeah, that's right. I would have stopped this myself. Turpin doesn't know where he is. Give me one. Give Daddy a big kick. You didn't help? Yeah. Yeah. When Ray was victorious as often as he was, there would be an impromptu gathering of folks. Ray celebrated the huge win by buying drinks for all of Harlem. At his own bar, of course. <laughs> These expensive celebrations would take their toll on his finances. It was important for him to be a champion. It was important for him to be liked. Robinson-Graziano fight was one that was in the making for about seven years. Mm -hmm. Although both fought out of New York, their careers up to now ran parallel, but they never crossed. Both had won and lost the middleweight title. Roger Sugar Ray regained it from Randy Turpin just seven months before this fight on September 12, 1951, to be exact. The International Boxing Club has finally put together the match that the American public has been seeing through its crystal ball for many years. A so-called dream match between the challenger and former middleweight champion of the world, Rocky Graziano, and the current middleweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Robinson. In a super fight for the ages, icon Rocky Graziano and Sugar Ray Robinson would do battle for the middleweight title. Graziano is 29 years old, and Ray Robinson is 32. You know, he, he could do it all. The way he does it, the technique he uses, how he gets it across, the power, the result, how dynamic, how explosive, how legendary sometimes. Graziano scores the first knockdown of the fight with about a minute to go in the round. Robinson backing towards the ropes, Graziano coming at him again. Shooting out that left hand, it's wide of the mark. Pecking out with the left, that's also short. Graziano bobbing, weaving, coming in on Robinson, forcing the action. Oh, no peas, no. This is Rocky Cousy, he's down. Man, no. On the right to the jaw, and the count reaches five. The devastating right put Graziano down for the 10 count. 10, Rocky is counted out. Ray Robinson is the winner. Rocky still wants to fight, but Rock wrestling Tommy Gilmore won't let him. A crowd of 23,785, which never sat in its expensive seats, witnessing one of the finest exchanges for the middleweight championship of the world, paying over $252,000. Graziano walking dejectedly to his corner. The great fight is somebody always coming from the brink of destruction and, have, and having over 202 fights, at least... 80 and 90 of those fights, he's at the brink of destruction, almost losing, and coming back to win. I mean, that, that, that shows the, the character. Most. The 1952 light heavyweight championship fight between champion Joey Maxim and the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Challenging Joey Maxim for the light heavyweight crown at Yankee Stadium in June of 1952. Robinson challenged Joey Maxim for the light heavyweight title. 
He had already won the welterweight championship and the middleweight championship. From 1943 to 1951, Robinson was unbeaten with 91 wins. Yankee Stadium, New York. Joey Maxim, world's light heavyweight champion. Ray jumped up to 175 to take on the lightweight champion, Joey Maxim. He was winning every round on the cards entering the 11th. You'll see how he wobbles that they've almost turned to jelly. None of that fine skill that he usually has. But the weight jump sapped Sugar's endurance, and the sweltering 100 degree temperature didn't help. the end of the round. Now look at him. They helped poor Sugar Ray back to his corner, 104 degrees, and it's all yeah, over. Yeah, the yeah. bell is rung, and Joe Max. I know that's hot, but I don't know exactly how much that is in Celsius. Still is the light heavyweight, the 175-pound champion of the world. Just two rounds, just six minutes away from joining the ring's charm circle of Triple Crown winners, Robinson was stopped for the first time in his career. It's this was to be his dizzy. last fight. The triumphant exit of one of the greatest scientific fighters the ring has ever produced. He retired, middleweight champion of the world, immediately after the big fight. Ray retired after the fight and went into show business. I've gone into show business because dancing is something I've always loved. The champ. Performing with Gene Kelly. The feet that dance their way to world titles in the boxing ring now aim to tread a very different measure. It's easy to see the attractions of the footlights hey! for Sugar Ray, but has he really finished fighting? A lot of my fans are wondering, in regards to my intentions of boxing again, as yet, I have not made up my mind. He was sloppy and neglectful about his own fortune that he amassed. He let his businesses run down. He got in trouble with the IRS over taxes. The collapse of his financial empire is what forced his compelling comeback. The retirement lasted two and a half years before financial issues forced him to return to the ring. That he's broke, desperately in need of finances. Well, that's somewhat true. I need a buck as well as anyone else, I guess. Defending champion was Carl Bobo Olsen. The best fought the best, and you had a lot of the best. Well, December, well, 9, the December 8th is my birthday, 1993. White champion Carl Bobo Olsen is challenged by Sugar Ray Robinson, Chicago, 9th of December, 1955. Uh, is that he a... came back to challenge the new... He must have some kind of Swedish background, because that sounds like a Swedish name. I'm from Sweden. Middleweight champion, Bobo oh, Olsen. Bobo Olsen. Sugar Ray making a tough comeback is now Swedish 35 background. years old to Olsen's 27. Sugar was 35 years old, and most suspected he was washed up. It took just two rounds before Ray made it clear he had plenty left to offer the sport. Robinson is the middleweight champion of the world. Winner by a knockout in two minutes and 51 seconds of the second round. Three years after he had retired, Sugar Ray was middleweight champion again. The comeback made him even more of an American hero. The greatest fighter pound for pound the ring has ever known, Sugar Ray Robinson. A rematch with Bobo Olsen was set. So well, here we are outdoors in Los Angeles. Last time out, Robinson knocked Olsen out in two rounds. This time, Olsen promises to do better. I want to see if he Olsen does. was right. He did do better in this outing, lasting four rounds instead of just two. That's a victory. His life flashed before his... Oh, my God. Olsen's down on his back again, very much like in the last fight. It's all over. Robinson's the winner. Muhammad Ali spoke openly about mimicking his style after Sugar Ray. Mm. The dancing, the footwork, the jab. Pound for pound, when they say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest fighter pound for pound, meaning that I imagine if he was a heavyweight fighting the same style, he'd be the greatest. I would have to admit, I would have to say yes. Watching Ali fight 
you saw someone aspiring to be Ray Robinson. He was the heavyweight Sugar Ray Robinson. That man was beautiful, timing, speed, reflexes, rhythm, and his body, everything was beautiful. Robinson defended against Gene Fulmer, very strong, powerful man. At age 36, Sugar Ray lost his middleweight title on points to 26-year-old Gene Fulmer. Robinson lost the 15-round decision. And again, the sports obituaries were written. Winner by unanimous decision, and the new middleweight champion of the world, Gene Wilmer. Sugar Ray Robinson was the challenger once more. At his training center at Pompton Lakes, he planned his revenge. One thing about Sugar Ray Robinson, you didn't want to be the guy who beat him and is fighting him in the rematch. Because if you were lucky enough, but very few people beat him. But if you were fortunate enough, good enough, to beat him while in the rematch, you usually got knocked out. Because he, <laughs> he fixed what we went wrong. Yeah. One of the no signs of a great one. Robinson was such a tactician that rematches to him were like tests with the answers already written in. Six months later, challenge and champ square up once again. It's Robinson's 148th professional fight. He's 36 years old. Fulmer, the champ, is 11 years younger. Gene Fulmer was a tremendous middleweight champion. Here's Sugar Ray Robinson, who was really a welterweight. The former world's welterweight and middleweight champion, Sugar Ray Robinson. The middleweight champion of the world, Gene Fulmer. And Fulmer, this strong bull guy, who was underrated as a fighter, too. To the left, and Sugar Ray Robinson. Fourth round of scheduled 15, and Sugar Ray gets home a good right-hand shot to the jaw of Fulmer. This may have been what Robinson was waiting for. He clamps down. Robinson he... versus Fulmer, too, would be one of Sugar Ray's finest moments. But as he steps to his right, he times a left hook. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Lefty, you going crazy. The brilliant KO put Robinson back on top. The first four-time middleweight champion in history. At the age of 37, he was on top of the world, middleweight champion. Once again. Did you uh, happen to catch the uh, welterweight title fight the other night, Ray? I'm always sorry to say I didn't. I'm, I'm just not a fight fan. <laughs> welterweight champion Basilio, like Robinson before him, now has his sights on the middleweight crown. Basilio would hand the aging Robinson another decision defeat. The winner and new middleweight champion of the world, Carmen Basilio. He felt he defeated Basilio. And there were many people who agreed with him. So, of course, a rematch was in order to settle the issue. The rematch, like always, was a different story. Nearly 40,000 fans in Yankee Stadium and all eyes on the ring as announcer Johnny Addy introduces the two contestants. By round three, the pace is fast as ever, and the fight is even Steven. Sugar Ray trying to drive those hard jabs to the body and face. It was darn near impossible to beat Sugar Ray twice. Simon Basilio having trouble with his left arm. In spectacular victories, Ray defeated the greatest fighters of his era. Randy Turpin, Carl Bobo Olsen, Gene Fulmer, and Carmen Basilio. Robinson battered Carmen over 15 rounds. Oh, this. Just look at that bulging left eye of Carmen Basilio's. By now, he's really in trouble. Swelling his eye like a balloon. Watch for the terrific close-ups of that all-important eye. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He was the best fighter I ever saw. And I've been looking at fighters for 55 years. The victory made him a six-time champion. Jeez. Come on, he's done. He's 
done for. Oh, my. The winner and the new world's middleweight champion, Sybil Ray Robinson. There you go. There you go. All the fighters, I put them up there on Mount Olympus. With all due respect to a great guy like Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Tony Canzaneri, Willie Pep, Sandy Sadler, so many greats, Muhammad Ali. They come here, Ray Robinson's up there, up on Mount Olympus by himself. Sugar Ray Robinson, the man who goes on and on and on as a boxer opens his European tour with a bout in Brussels. He continued fighting, tallying over 200 fights in total. The old master fights himself out of the tight corner. This is Robinson's 167th fight. The quickness is so precise. In the eighth round, the payoff as Robinson knocks Power. out Sarens with a terrific punch to the body. The fighter who was first to be called pound for pound mm. the greatest fighter ever. Mm. He could box, he could slug, he could defend himself. I guess he had a panache. You know, he he could do it all. Some hard uppercut. this fight. Robinson hung up his gloves to the plaudits of fight fans everywhere. His retirement spurred a celebration of his career at Madison Square Garden. Just three weeks later, a farewell tribute is given in Ray's honor at Madison Square Garden. In 201 professional fights, he has won 184, 109 of these by knockout. A magnificent record. The greatest pound-for-pound pound fighter of all time. Pound-for-pound, pound, he was the best fighter of all time. Pound for pound, the best boxer ever to enter the ring. Greatest fighter, pound for pound, who ever lived. Sugar Ray Robinson is safely ensconced in that position. And one of the all-time greats, Sugar Ray Robinson, the original Sugar Ray, died of Alzheimer's disease and diabetes this morning in California. He was 67 years old. Whenever he fought, the world had a way of standing still the sin of the rain belongs to him. He is called by most the greatest pound-for-pound pound fighter ever. There was once a boxer who danced in the ring. He fought for a quarter of a century, winning the welterweight title and the middleweight crown five Not different times. <laughs> I think pound-for-pound pound, he was the greatest of ever, ever, ever won except in the ring. The guy had over 200 fights. He fought for 25 years. Sugar Ray's record was 128 and 1, with 84 knockouts. Sugar Ray Robinson! Sugar Ray Robinson. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Shout out to Joe Vincent. Great documentary. Well made. Uh, really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys did too. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I hope you see you in another video. Appreciate you watching. Bye.